Hello and welcome to another quick episode of 42 Business Principles, Business Growth Principles uh, podcast. So um, this is not a very long podcast. It really just covers um, one of the business growth principles every single week. We cover uh, the business principles at, uh, at 10 a.m. On a, on a Friday morning. And we today we're busy with business principle number two, number one. We, uh, we spoke about marketing uh, being um, your ultimate leverage, your ultimate leverage. Uh, that was a great discussion and uh, I got some good, good feedback on that. So thank you very much for those that, that, that replied, responded, read, listened, and so on. Um, so today, number two, the 42 business principles, the, the, just to give you a recap of what this um, podcast is all about, this podcast really is focused on those business growth principles that are as 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 um, irrefutable, it would be the right word, as gravity or as friction or as any kind of uh, principle. You know, you, uh, even if you you know work in, in 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 terms of human psychology, the law of reciprocity. You know, you give, you expect to get back, and, and or, or people assume. You know, there's a re re reciprocal relationship in any engagement uh, within within the way we operate. You know, if I take uh, someone uh, out for a meal or a drink or a coffee or something like that, um, there's almost a reciprocal responsibility for that person to do that in return. It's it's, it's almost written into our DNA. That is a principle. It's a behavioral psychology principle that's built in um, into us. But that's not today's principle. There's a friction, like I said uh, last week, you know, it's, just, it's every time you jump off the top of the building, you are going to land on the ground. You're not going to, you know, jump off and then fly sideways this time and fly the other way that, that time and then fly up. You're literally going to jump off the building and every single time you are going to land on the ground. So, that is gravity. I mean, that's going to be like, you cannot, that's irrefutable. So these 42 business principles are irrefutable. You cannot go against them. Try at your peril to go against them. So last week we covered marketing being your ultimate, ultimate leverage. We spoke about the various aspects of, of, uh, of that. And you're welcome to go and re-listen to that, to that episode. The 42 business business growth principles uh, for me are, are critical. And, and I think if, if, if you take these weekly um, podcasts and you say, if I just implement every week one of these business growth principles, just one, every week, this coming week, I focus on it, I put it into, into practice, and then next week I share another one and you do the same every single week. If you've missed last week's one, please go back and 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 do watch do watch it or listen to it if it's if it's audio. But this week we are covering the second for, uh, of the forty two business principles, and that is multiple channels of distribution. Okay, so what is what does that mean, and 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 how does that apply in our modern world, in in the modern way of marketing? Because sometimes people have got this. Um, uh, let's call it a premonition, if you like, or an assumption that you know the uh, principles that used to work 50 years ago are no longer apply in our modern society. In fact, it's probably now magnified. It's probably now so much more um, uh, prevalent. But it is it is done at such a much, uh, such a higher uh, rate and and volume that you don't even realize that this principle is is being applied okay so let's let, let let's let's break it down multiple channels of distribution what do what do we mean by that so so multiple channels of distribution in marketing and we're talking here about marketing and and business growth and business growth is about if you have um uh, you got a business you or you are in a business development role and you, you need to be able to get your message out there. Multiple channels of distribution starts with the, the premise. <laughs> and, I, and I always laugh, I always smile, that 
um, when someone is struggling to make sales uh, and they're struggling to get new new clients and customers, what? <laughs> uh, and you ask them, so so how many people did you actually speak to? How many people did you reach out to um, this week? And they're going to say, ah, well, maybe three, maybe five, maybe ten. I'm not sure. Or a hundred or a thousand. I mean, I'm not sure how they do it. And then there's different ways of reaching out. I mean, did I send out a batch of 10,000 spam emails? Did I make five phone calls? Did I try and link to a few people on LinkedIn? Did I create a few uh, videos um, and send them out as, a, uh, as an approach? Uh, did I attend networking meetings? Did I go into forums and, and answer uh, a number of questions and answers? Did I go into Quora, for instance, and create a question and, and provide an answer and then um, uh, put out, uh, uh, you know, put that out to, to, to market? So multiple channels of distribution starts with the premise is that you can't make sales, you can't grow your business, you can't develop anything, you can't grow unless you are reaching people. So multiple channels of distribution means I need to find not just one, but multiple methods of getting to reach out to my clients, reach out to my potential prospects, reach out to my existing clients. And even I'm reaching out to those that I've had previous discussions and communications with and retargeting uh, communication with them. Why? Okay, because we'll get to some other later principles, but a lot of these principles are, 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 are connected. But one of the one of the things that does seem to happen in especially in professional services businesses or b2b or business to business type of environments but i would say business to consumer or, or any other type of marketing as as well is strangely enough and i'm not sure how this works it's a bit like that law of reciprocity that i mentioned at the beginning of the podcast is there's this weird thing that happens is that if you are communicating with your audience on a regular level. So I'm not just talking about multiple channels, I'm talking about also about regularity of how often you are communicating. Often when you speak to someone for the first time, you are potentially only opening a conversation, you're only starting a relationship. You are not yet at that point where you can um, uh, consummated deal you there's not a there's or, or some kind of transaction there's no way you can provide the value and and get some value in in return without starting a, a, a relationship but the strangest thing is that we have this issue around how many times must i go out and actually go out and speak to people the weirdest thing is that within a two-year period um, if you've regularly communicated and this person is in your target market they are potentially the right kind of person they follow the bent which i'll go through at, at, at a later stage but basically they've got the budget they've got the ability they've got the um uh, they, they've got the uh, decision-making power, they've got the, 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 ti the timing is right, etc. All those things are in place. Um, when you meet them the first time, they might not be ready. But in a two-year period, the weirdest thing is that if you've regularly communicated with that, that person at the right kind of intervals, with the right kind of messaging, you can potentially have relationships or some kind of connection even if it's a referral or a business relationship built with up to 80 percent of those people that you make communication with and they fit within your right target audience profile i'm not talking about uh, the homeless person sitting on the bench uh, you know having too much alcohol and, and and so on because you know life has been tough i'm talking about your actual your your the avatar the persona the person that you are targeting your dream customer your dream client if you are communicating over a period of two years you've got an up to 80 percent of them you will build a relationship there's no doubt in, in my mind what happens a lot with these multiple channels of distribution is that people do one hit 
communication. So they'll go out and do a single hit. They'll go out and think, why am I not getting new business? And and uh, maybe broadcast in terms of a lot of different channels uh, and then wait. And, and, and this core principle, this one, multiple channels of distribution, is one of, in today's world, if you can just imagine how many types of platforms we have. We've got uh, the more traditional ones, uh, which are, you know, your, your local community meetings, uh, your um, chamber of commerce. If you, if you remember the good old days of the chambers of commerce, where they were very, very strong uh, uh, in terms of the community that they had meeting. Chambers of Commerce used to be very good with bringing business people together. These days, I'm not so sure that many of them are doing a great job or even, um, are even delivering on their actual value statements. But that was a way we used to get, get together. But in terms of channels of distribution, if you're just doing Chambers of Commerce, but you're not doing something on, um, say, Instagram or TikTok or Twitch or any one of the other uh, forums and channels. There are in Facebook, there are multiple groups. You just have to go in and look and search on, on Google or, or, uh, or any of the, the search uh, engines. You'll find forums where people of the same um, mind or, or have, who have got the same problem or issue that they're dealing with are congregating or getting together. You should be there. You should be looking at, reading through uh, the, the questions, the answers, getting a sense of, of, your, of your community and also contributing. The multiple channels of distribution is not out there trying to sell to everybody, but it's about the connection that you are you're, you're, you are distributing your expertise, you're distributing your knowledge, but in addition, you're just, just distributing your visibility um, because you cannot be successful unless you are actually approaching people. Let's just, let's just get, that, get that elephant out, um, uh, out into the open. But multiple channels of distribution is to select a multiple set of, ch of distribution channels that are appropriate to your avatar or your persona that you are trying to reach. If you professional services, which is what what uh, what a lot of my podcasts and a lot of my uh, communication uh, revolves around, is if you professional services, you want to be in the professional services environment. One of the key things that you must try and do. And I had a really good conversation with, with a, a marketing expert this week. And, and he just reminded me again of, of you know, um, if, you, if you're a, a particular type of um, a discipline or you, you, you do a particular type of thing, it's good to know your own community. Your own community can refer you to others, but you can't rely on your own community to be the only source of, of, of of uh, leads or um, introductions. So let's say you belong to the um, post merge integration, or let's call it the some technical, you know, let's call it developers, uh, API code developers community. And you are also a code developer, software developer, and you are attending all these meetings and you are sharing and you're having great conversations because they're all the same as you and then you can all talk code and you can all talk about the next little widget and thing that you've created. Um, that in itself is great because maybe they have a skill you don't and you can introduce them or you have a skill that they don't and they can introduce you. Great place, but can, can't be the only place. You need to go and expand. You need to say, where are other people that I can meet get introduced and start uh, building out relationships and and then um, sharing uh, value to those people. Now let's take let's continue the coder um, example. If you can let's say write um, API code and you can do integrations between different pieces of software and you're looking for clients, um, where do you go? You need to find people with problems of integration surely and you need to then develop messaging. That's not all about the technical side of things, but it's about 
the 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 problems and issues that that target audience has and that you can address fulfill or fix uh or help them with so if we look at the 42 business principles first one is marketing is the ultimate le leverage so you must have marketing in place number two is the channels of distribution i would recommend the following few, a few things the one is decide on the different channels now as an example um if you take the advent of facebook uh, as an example and linkedin um and you take something like a youtube and, and google and so on a lot of those technologies um are not even 20 years old okay but they've taken over our, our our world to a certain extent but if you look at the facebook platform specifically there's that is a very difficult platform it has got a few billion people on that platform you've got trolls you got some really really weird wackos on there and i have no idea that those people even existed until i went onto facebook in fact i feared facebook at one stage purely because of the, the the weirdos but there's also some really really good people and you need to select and choose your audience uh, very carefully and you need to be under, understanding of that platform in terms of using that as a tool but using that as a specific um tool within its boundaries and confounds if you look at linkedin now i mean if you take facebook people were were uh, you know that are posting their cats dogs and their next meal or a milkshake or you know them getting drunk on the beach or whatever it is that's facebook has got a lot of that type of stuff i mean and if you're in business to business or your professional services that kind of thing will put you off however facebook has some incredible advantages in terms of the groups that are built within facebook you you'll find facebook will have a, a, a large communities being built in terms of facebook groups you just have to search them out see who they are move away from the ones that are spammy and always trying to promote but try and find those 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 let's call it or genuine authentic individuals that have that truly want to add value to each other's lives or truly have issues and things they're trying to to solve problems they're trying to address um facebook is good facebook can be bad but facebook can be very very powerful if you know how to then use it so one of my things would be if you're setting channels of distribution select a channel try and understand it understand how best to use it and even if you go then to the next step and say write yourself a little uh, manual or a to do or a guide guiding principles i love that concept of guiding principles so you have four or five or six and say when i deal with facebook these are my guiding principles if i deal with linkedin now linkedin is is for mostly for i mean initially it was started for um uh, job search so people were posting their uh, their resumes their cvs and uh, um uh, hr people um recruitment agents and job seekers that was pretty much where linkedin started and it turned then more and more and more into a business platform linkedin as as then went and bought uh, i think lynda.com which is a a training an online training business and they've incorporated incorporated that into their professional uh, version which costs other than let's say 100 pounds 100 dollars a month um and it's very powerful and great training great this so it's become a really good business platform um you know when somebody starts posting dating things and um you know cats and dogs and things like that you know they get shunned why because it's a business community that's on there and people like that don't have time for that kind of thing and you'll see that those people either get slated or they just so don't even appear again so what's nice about linkedin is very focused on the business community um it, it does have a problem recently there's been a lot of bots or, or or these automated programs that have gone out and 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 um and sent out spam invites and spam connections where there's a sequence of messages like you know hey uh this is a you know i i can get you at the number one ranking of google uh yes my um my calendar link 
and let's set up a meeting or or you know I, I loved your profile it was absolutely brilliant you do an amazing thing very generic nothing there that's personalized but very generic message you're a fantastic person you're a business leader it looks like you're the right kind of person to talk to click on my link and make an appointment so we can get to know each other i mean Wow, that's not even a proper. Uh, who would, what business person would really be taking that seriously? But there was a proliferation of these spam bots that were just milking the that community for a while. So it's become one of those where you become very, um, uh, you know, when you get these weird messages, you 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 shun them and. Now it's very much a personalized thing, which I'm, I'm enjoying. It's coming back to its roots where it's single. It's, it's, it's you do an individual introduction. You research the person. You, may, you, you, you show that you've actually understood that person, where they're coming from, what they need, and, 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 and you've made it personal. I'm even liking the video-based LinkedIn approaches where you could do a personal message to the person. You could even have a screenshot of their website or maybe of an award they won or or something that's appeared in the in some kind of publication to show that you've you've gone to the trouble to actually understand them as a person, you understand who they are. And even if you do five or ten outreaches in a day, but they're high quality, LinkedIn is incredibly powerful. So that's a channel of distribution. Same thing with Facebook. Again, you can do decent searches. You can do retargeting and so on. Very, very good. YouTube, brilliant search engine. Again, you can do searching and so on, and you can go and find people who have created channels and things like that, and you can join. You can subscribe. You can join. You can get into those conversations and comments down below the videos and start reaching out to people that are that are potentially with fit within your persona, your avatar that your target customer is trying to reach. Twitch is a new one. That's that, that's great. Um, Twitter, uh, I, I'm 50-50 I'm on Twitter, for instance. Uh, again, it's great if you can have a set of basic followers. You've got to be very selective in terms of who you, who you speak to. Uh, and what kind of messaging you put out there, but it's a very powerful platform. Uh, especially the high-profile people get a lot of uh, press uh, over there. So again, you, sh you should be thinking about how do you become an authority, how do you can you build a, a bit of a following, and how can you look for groups that um, are where your persona, your target audience sits, and then you need to be communicating and so on. So social media means exactly that. It's a social platform. Let's move out from, from all the social and let's look at look at email uh, as, as, a, as a method. Now, email still works. Email is great. But again, it should be targeted, should be personalized. You can uh, video uh, messaging within email works incredibly well. I would, I would definitely use that as a channel of distribution. Um, I would I would potentially look at having um, a target of five or ten or fifteen emails, well researched, setting aside time every day, and saying that's my target persona, that's the research I've done. There's my my quick one two minute video that I've made, and I send out a mail and I introduce myself, and then I have a follow up sequence again, personalized, not spam, not bombarding people with long reams of writing and, and so on, but it's really as quick as possible to do the introduction and then to get those introductions into an online uh, meeting environment or alternatively, not just a meeting environment, but you could even these days, thankfully, you can, if you're in a similar sort of area, is to meet face to face and to continue the conversation, but to turn it into something personal. You can't do that if you're sending out 10,000 spam emails and you're hoping to hit something. If you are incredibly targeted. So one of the, 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 the I would say, takeaways from today's session would be, for the multiple channels of distribution, would be to say, who is my target avatar? Who am I looking for? What is the demographic? 
Um, if you go into Canva, Canva is, is a free uh, um, uh, graphics tool. Uh, and, the, the, and you do a search for persona or avatar. Um, I think it even brings up uh, templates of what an avatar should be made up from. So you can go and into Canva, create yourself a free account, do a search, and you'll see that even on a one page, it, it gives you the ability to put, let's say, a photograph of what that uh, target dream customer looks like, who, you know, just an image of them, uh, and then some of their demographic psychographics and some of their personality traits, where they hang out and so on. And you might have two or three of these because you don't want a hundred. I mean, you not, don't, can't have a hundred different personas you're looking at, looking for, but you have the ideal customer profile. Once you've got the ideal customer profile, you then go and find the ideal channel to, to, to approach them. Telephone still works incredibly well, but telephone only works well if you, again, do research. You go on LinkedIn, you go on other research tools, you look in, in media, you try and find out about those people and rather make five or 10 decent phone calls in a day as opposed to trying to do 200 phone calls. Hello, this is me. Do you want to buy? Yes, no, goodbye. Where you should be rather thinking about the sequence. So this week you phone, hey, it's me. Um, I see you've done this, you've done that. Are you keen to meet? No, thank you. Do you mind if I give you a call again uh, in, in a month or so? Yes, no problem. Phone in a month. Phone in the next month. Phone in the next month. Remember what I said at the beginning of this, of this podcast. You have this two-year um, space where up to, up to 80% of the people that fit within your target profile, if you do the right kind of communication, up to 80% of those people, you'll build a relationship with them. I'm not saying you'll do business with all of them, but you'll build a decent relationship with because what are we really trying to do at the end of the day? We're building a community of our target customer profile by talking to people. We might not be able to sell to them. We are understanding their problems, their issues, the way we can serve them and the way we can add value to their lives more and more and more. And we understanding deeper, richer, broader aspects of our personas or the avatars that we are trying to reach, we can then adjust our products, our services, our approaches, our language. Um, we can understand their language. We can get the lingo, as they say. We can understand what are the key words and issues that are uh, affecting them right now. There might be trends within the industry in your target audience that if you're not aware of, you know, it could be a downtime part of their, of their season where they're not buying right now. It could be an uptime where they're preparing to, to buy. And if you're not in the queue at the right time and you phone too late, you have to sometimes wait three years before you have an opportunity again. But if you don't understand buying cycles and the language and the culture and the community and, and so on. And that's why if, if you get multiple channels of distribution, with a very narrow focused niche, which will which will touch in, in, in positioning and unique set propositions and so on later on in further uh, business principles. But multiple channels of distribution is choose a number of channels. And then from there, what you, what you must do is, is very, very clearly just make absolutely sure that you understand who you're trying to reach, but very clearly understand the frameworks of each one of those different channels. Those channels all have their own personalities, their own style, and they have their trolls. They have their really grumpy, miserable people that have got nothing else to do in life but, but make your life miserable. We don't want to engage with those. You'd rather just block them, get rid of them. Thankfully, these days with a lot of the platforms, you can do that. Um, with email, people can unsubscribe and ask please not to be contacted again. Again, please respect and honor that. But those that, that, that agree to continue the conversation, build those relationships because it's, it's all about speaking to multiple people on multiple channels um, multiple times. <laughs> and I think that's the way to end today's podcast. Thank you very, very much for joining me today on 42 Business Growth uh, Principles. Join me next week for our next episode 
on 42 Business Growth Principles and I hope and I wish for you great success this coming week.